Hello students, this is your English lesson. Today we are going to start Oxford Reading Circle, Book 7. So we start our lesson. We are going to read Unit Number 1, The Secret of Sea View Cottage. Let's get started. This is page number 9 from your book. Isn't it wonderful? cried Jimmy Wright as he followed his comrades of the Castrol Patrol into the tiny cottage standing a few yards from the deserted beach. I wonder if we shall find any treasure buried under the floorboards. Hey! cried Mr. Millman, the wealthy scout master of the troop of sea scouts. Letting your imagination run wild, Jimmy. The youngest member of the patrol went red. I was just wondering, sir, he said lamely. The Scott master patted the boy on the back. It will be dark soon, he said. And I'm sure you are all as hungry as I am after the voyage. Voyage, a long journey, travel by sea. Yes, sir, cried the Scots, and then began a general forage. Forage? of a person or animal search widely for food or provision a journal forage round for stores and cooking ports an hour later the boys and the scout master gave vent to satisfied sars and agreed that a meal had never gone down so well gave vent to express a strong emotion in a forceful and open way. Do you think this place is haunted, sir? Haunted of a place frequented by a ghost? Asked Jimmy after the meal had been cleared away and he listened to the creaking of the floorboards overhead. Mr. Millman nodded a smile on his lips. It's local gossip, he answered. And I will remember that when my brother and I were lads, we used to see all manner of weird shadows pass across the windows of Sea View Cottage. Very, very strange. The speaker laughed. But don't you worry, he added. You won't meet any ghosts. The youngest scout grinded rather feebly, feebly in a weak way, and then squaring his shoulders, squaring to pull his shoulders, glanced across at his best friend Bob Wells. Hey Bob, he cried, let's explore. And at the other's eager nod, the two rose and vanished up the winding staircase of the old cottage to which Mr. Millman had brought some of his scouts in his small yacht. Yacht, a medium-sized sailing boat equipped for cruising. Yacht for a month's holiday. Small yacht for a month's holiday. Meanwhile, the others continued to talk and Gerald Turnbull was in the middle of a rather funny story when there came a terrific clatter on the stairs and Bob Willis literally fell into the room. Help! he gasped. Go host! Ghost! We have seen them! Don't be silly! snapped the scout master, gripping the sea scout. You are not a kid! Bob swallowed hard and pulled himself together. I'm sorry, sir, he answered bravely, but Jimmy and I saw a figure upstairs and... Where is Jimmy? asked Jack Barton suddenly. Bob shook his head. I don't know, he replied. I thought he was behind me. Mr. Millman looked rather anxious. Come along, all of you, he said. This must be looked into. And he led the way upstairs to find all the bedrooms deserted. Deserted of a place, empty of people. Jimmy Roth had completely and utterly vanished. Suddenly there came a cry from the room over the kitchen and, as the others dashed back, dashed back, run somewhere in a great hurry. 
dashed back into the room where Bob had seen his supposed ghost. They found Jack Burton peering into a cupboard. Look, sir, cried Jack, as he held the door of the cupboard open for his scout master. Isn't that a door or something at the back? Mr. Millman whipped out a torch and flashed its beam on the back of the cupboard. You are right, he muttered, and what's more, it is partly open. There is no doubt that our young friend Jimmy has gone exploring further. Keep together, all of you, and follow me. There seem to be some steps leading downwards. The boys of the Crystal Patrol followed eagerly, their hearts beating with excitement and hardly able to credit the fact that they were having a great adventure on the first day of their holiday. One by one, on the past, through the cupboard, and then down a flight of dirty, worn, and slippery stone steps. Once down the steps, the members of the patrol found that they were in a lofty, well-built tunnel. All had torches for whoever heard of a scout who was not prepared for any emergency, so that these tiny points of light were quite enough to light up the tunnel. The procession moved forward in silence and without an incident, but suddenly the scoutmaster called a halt. Halt, stop, and pushing and jostling, the boys managed to get close enough to their leader to see what had caused him to stop so abruptly. Here is the reason for the tunnel, whispered the owner of the yacht, which even then rode safely at anchor in the bay. Here is evidence of what work Bob's or ghost does for a living. Next were crammed forward and questions rose to every pair of lips. Do you mean that we have hit upon a smuggler's lair? Whispered Bob. That's about the size of it, agreed the scoutmaster and I reckon. Reckon, consider, there is something like a thousand pounds worth of contraband goods here. Contraband imported or exported illegally. Jove, whispered Jack Barton. What a thrill! Then he paused. But what about Jimmy? He went on. If there are smugglers about, even modern ones, won't he be running into terrible danger? The scoutmaster raised his head. By Jove, he said. Honestly, you are dead right, Jack. We must push forward at once. Those men won't stop at anything to prevent their secret from being. Mr. Millman stopped speaking as abruptly as if someone had pressed pause for a sudden shout echoed round the tunnel. Quick! yelled Gerald Turbull. I have found a trigger and a skeleton. In a second, the scoutmaster and the rest of the castrel patrol were dashing along the tunnel. Bob Willis was the first to arrive at his comrade's side, but the others were not far behind. Soon they were all staring with amazed eyes at a pile of tarnished gold, tarnished loose lustrous, and silver articles which were hidden in a deep recess in the wall and at a bleached skeleton. Jumping snakes, cried Mr. Millman. This is a find. This is why the tunnel was constructed. The smuggling part of the business must have come much later. He paused. But how did the smugglers manage to miss it? I should have thought it would be impossible not to see this lot. Oh, but sir, put in Gerald. It was all hidden by a covering of plaster which was completely concealed by layers of dirt. It was by sheer accident that I fell heavily against the plaster. The scoutmaster nodded understandingly and, after examining the trigger and avoiding contact with the bones, he standed up. He straightened up. We can't bother about this now, he cried. We have got Jimmy right to think about. 
forward the castrol patrol but make less noise i think i can see the opening just ahead and he leveled his torch towards the tunnel some yards away shall we turn off our torches asked bob a good idea came the reply and so in the darkness of that underground tunnel the members of the patrol of sea scouts crept along towards the entrance it was a very dan solemn experience and none of the boys were sorry when they finally emerged into the open air at a quiet spot amongst the sand dunes some 200 yards from the water's edge now what whispered david jones shh hissed the scout master warningly i thought i heard something and the party stood stock still and listened it intently there's someone close by whispered bob willis in his leader's ear to the right i think the other nodded and then bidding the remainder of the paddle stay where they were he and bob wriggled their way forward between the low shrub like bushes bob was leading and so it was that he was the first to discover his chum jimmy he cried as he stumbled over the form of form of the scout who had started the adventure are you all right speak to me for goodness sake say something agul agul wom said jimmy obediently he is gagged wrapped out the scout master as he bent over the prostrate figure prostrate lying stretched out on the ground with one's face downwards the prostrate figure of the youngest member of the castrels and in less than a minute jimmy rot was gasping out his story the gist of which was that he had chased a ghost through the tunnel only to meet with three other very solid ghosts on the beach they knocked me on the head he finished ruefully ruefully in a way that expresses sorrow or regret tied that filthy rag round my mouth until i could hardly breathe and then pinched the sea hawk i heard them start the engine mr millman did not hesitate for a second and as there was no longer any need for silence he placed a silver whistle to his lips and blew three short blasts the call of the castle patrol in a very short while the rest of the scouts came up at the dub man the outboard commanded the scout master and make for the yacht you bob he added signal the captain to up anchor we are going after those smugglers unless he hesitated unless anyone would like to turn in he finished a chorus of protest went up and a few minutes later the whole patrol was aboard the small the smaller of the yards three three shore craft it was a tight squeeze for the stolen sea hawk was much the bigger boat but the sea scouts managed it and were soon making without lights for the yard that had not yet steamed away after bringing the boys to the cottage when they arrived alongside they were greeted by captain strort you are too late sir he called out and it's a good job i didn't sail on the evening tide but i'll lower the gangway sir he added and tell the whole story now what's all this about captain demanded the owner of the yacht as he finally stood on deck what do you mean by saying that we are too late the hardy old salt saluted and then grinned almost boyishly i mean just this sir he answered and at a sign for from him three sailors came forward dragging between them four very sorry looking spice men of humanity were you looking for these gentlemen sir he asked mr millman nodded we were he answered and i might mighty glad you saved us the trouble of chasing them of chasing them
saw them making off with the sea hawk sir said the captain so me and the second mate tumbled into the long boat and napped um the scoutmaster looked worried what shall we do with them he asked they probably belong to some village about here the captain shook his head no sir he replied they are foreigners and i reckon you gave them a complete surprise when you moved into the cottage they have probably been doing a roaring trade in smuggled goods for ages hum mused the owner of the yacht then we had a better keep them below for tonight and hand them over to the police in the morning and thus the secret or rather the two secrets of sea view cottage became revealed and after a good deal of legal talk the sea scouts received a goodly sum of money from the government as their share of the treasure trove trove a store of valuable things then the big yacht was bought for the troop for it must be mentioned that mr millman had seriously considered selling it owing to the expense incurred in keeping it in commission and the scouts had one of the finest vessels of its kind around the coast of great britain all because jimmy wright and bob willis went chasing course Oh, and by the way, Sea View Cottage is now known as Smuggler's Cottage and is the smartest little place one could ever wish to see. Now come to the exercises. A questions one: How long was the Sea Scout troop going to be on holiday? Answer: The Sea Scout troop was going to be on holiday for a month. Two. find the descriptions and speech of the scout master mr millman and create a short character sketch of him answer mr millman is the wealthy scout master of the troop of sea scouts he is a very calm and composed man who does not panic in any situation or believe local gossip he does not believe in ghosts and helps the troop unfold the mystery of the cottage that was supposed to be haunted he is a brave and confident man with presence of mind and wisdom 3 which expressions tell us that the sea scouts enjoyed the adventure answer the boys of the castrel patrol followed eagerly their hearts beating with excitement and hardly able to credit the fact that they were having a great adventure on the very first day of their holiday and what a thrill are some of the expressions that tell us that the sea scouts enjoyed the adventure four bob willis was scared after returning from the staircase do you agree give reasons for your answer answer i agree that bob willis was scared after returning from the staircase because he dashed into the room and began speaking in a stuttering voice he tried to be brave but it was obvious that he was finding it difficult to keep himself composed five which words and phrases tell us that the treasure had been hidden a long time answer it is evident that the treasure had been hidden a long time because it was hidden by a covering of plaster completely concealed under layers of dirt also the gold and silver articles had been tarnished 6 what were the two secrets of sea view cottage answer The two secrets of the sea view cottage were the treasure trove and the fact that smugglers were using it for their business. 7. What do you think happened to the smugglers? Answer. The smugglers were probably handed over to the police. 8. What do you think was the most exciting part of the story? Give reasons for your choice. Answer. I think the most exciting part of the story is when the two secrets of Sea View Cottage became revealed and after a good deal of talk the sea scouts received a goodly sum of money 
from the government as their share of the trade trove. B. Reference to context. Read these lines from the story, then answer the questions. 1. But how did the smugglers manage to miss it? I should have thought it would be impossible not to see this lot. A. Who says these words and to whom? Answer. Mr. Millman is speaking to Jared Turnbull. B. What is being spoken about? Answer. The pile of tarnished gold and silver articles as well as the bleached skeleton is being spoken about. C. How have the smugglers missed it? Answer. The smugglers had missed it as it was hidden by a covering of plaster concealed by layers of dirt. D. Where do you think it came from? Answer. The honor, the owners of the cottage must have hidden it in the tunnel. 2. You are too late, sir, he called out. A. Who says these words and to whom? Answer. Captain Sturt says these words to Mr. Millman. B. Why does he need to call out? Answer. He needs to call out because he had found the four smugglers the scoutmaster had been chasing after. C. What does the speaker mean? What has he done? Answer. He means to say that they were late in catching the smugglers. He had caught them while they were making of the sea hawk. C. Words and meaning. 1. Find 10 Lee adjectives in the story. Lamely, bravely, eagerly, abruptly, earnestly, heavily, goodly, boyishly, rawfully, intently. 2. Use five of the Lee words you have found in sentences of your own. Bravely. The soldiers fought bravely in the battlefield for the honor of their country. Eagerly. The patient was waiting for the doctor eagerly, abruptly. My younger brother turned abruptly and left the room, earnestly. I earnestly advised her to cooperate with her husband, heavily. After doing lunch, he sat down heavily on the couch and watched a movie. 3. Use 10 things related to boats and the sea in the story. Voyage, vessel, yacht, deck, tide, anchor, bay, floorboards, sea hawk, sea scouts. 4. Here are some nautical expressions. What do they mean? A. Land lubber, a sailor unfamiliar with the sea. B. Be all at sea. Completely confused. C. Sail close to the wind. Sail against the wind. D. Have a whale of a time. Enjoy oneself very much. E. A storm in a teacup. Great excitement about a very small matter. F. Tip of the iceberg. Only a hint of a large problem. G. Cash the drift. To cash the general meaning of some piece of information. H. Be in deep water. Be in a difficult situation. D. Language. One copy down what the captain says. You are too late, sir, he called out. And it's good job. I didn't sail on the evening tide. But I'll lower the gangway sir he added and tell the whole story saw so them making off with the sea hawk sir said the captain so me and the second mate tumbled into the long boat and nabbed him the captain shook his head no sir he replied they are furniers and i reckon you gave them a complete surprise when you moved into the cottage they have probably been doing a roaring trade in smuggled goods for ages. 3. Look at the use of 
squaring his shoulders in the passage. Do you know what these idioms mean? Discuss them and then use some in sentences that show you understand what they mean. A. A weight off your shoulders. A relief from worry. Sentence. I think it was a real weight of Jimmy's shoulders when you asked him to take care of the pit, pet dog. Achilles heel. A weakness or vulnerable point. Sentence. Math has always been my Achilles heel. Find your feet. Stand up and become able to walk. Sentence. I was away for a long time, so it will take me time to find my feet again. Gut feeling. An instinctive feeling as opposed to an opinion based on facts. Sentence. You have a gut feeling. You feel who is going to play well under pressure. And are tired. Used to say that someone is unable to act freely because something such as a rule or law prevents it. Sentence. I wish I could sell your tickets, sell you tickets, but the system is down right now, so my hands are tied. Head start. Advantage over other people in same situation. Sentence. She took some extra classes to get a head start in the career. Joined at the hip. Used to describe two people who are often or usually together. Sentence. My roommate and I were joined at the hip until she joined an insurance company. Pain in the neck. An annoying or tedious person or thing. Sentence. Filling out all these forms is a pain in the neck. Sight for sore eyes. A pleasant sight. Something that is beautiful to look at. Sentence. After a long drive, the destination was a sight for sore eyes. Weak at the knees. Overcome by a strong feeling. Sentence. I felt quite weak at the knees when I saw a crying child, she said. E. Discuss and write. 1. Choose one of the sea scouts and collect notes on what he says and does at each part of the adventure. Mr. Millman nodded, a smile on his lips. It's local gossip, he answered, and I will remember that when my brother and I were lads, we used to see all manner of varied shadows pass across the windows of Sea View Cottage. Mr. Millman looked rather anxious. Come along, all of you, he said. This must be looked into. And he led the way upstairs to find all the bedrooms deserted. Mr. Millman whipped out a torch and flashed its beam on the back of the cupboard. You are right, he muttered. And what's move? And what's more? It is partly open. Mr. Millman stopped speaking as abruptly as if someone had pressed pause. For a sudden shout echoed round the tunnel. Jumping snakes, cried Mr. Millman. This is a find. This is why the tunnel was constructed. The smuggling part of the business must have come much later. Mr. Millman did not hesitate for a second and as there was no longer any new need for silence, he placed a silver whistle to his lips and blew three short blasts. The call of the castral patrol. Mr. Millman nodded. We were, he answered, and I am mightily glad you saved us the trouble of chasing them. To write a letter home as your chosen character, describe your role in the adventure, be creative and add details to make your account interesting. Dear parents, hope you would be fine and waiting for my letter. I know you are excited to ask about my adventure. I want to tell you from the beginning. Firstly, I thought place is haunted and I literally fell into the room when there came a terrific clatter on the stairs. 
Then Mr. Millman asked about Jimmy. He was nowhere. Mr. Millman looked anxious and we went to the room and peeped through a cupboard. There was a narrow tunnel. After a long time of search, we found Jimmy tied tightly. Jimmy told that I heard them start the engine. The scoutmaster discovered huge treasure and smugglers were caught up by the police. Now cottage is smallest place to visit. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.